Oh, Jussie, Jussie, Jussie. Hey, what's up, everybody? Good morning, good evening, good night, whatever it is, wherever you are. Let's just dive right into this. So, a quick recap, just in case you've been visiting your Aunt May on Pluto. Uh, on January 29th, Empire star Jussie Smollett filed a police report of an alleged attack by two white men at 2 o'clock in the morning while walking home from a Subway restaurant. His first interview was conducted an hour after the attack was reported. During this interview, it is discovered that Jussie's manager was the one who had notified the police. Jussie had, had alleged that two white males in ski masks hurled racial slurs and homophobic slurs at him, punched him, kicked him, poured bleach on him, and put a noose around his neck, all the while saying that this is MAGA country and homophobic and slurs. So definitely their voices were definitely heard. Key note there. Their voices were heard. Jesse said he heard them. He heard them say these things. He heard them say empire. He heard them say the homophobic slurs, the racial slurs. And he said that he heard them say MAGA country. The Nigerians said this, according to Jesse. But at the time, he didn't say it was Nigerians. At the time, he said it was two white people. Because, you know, the white person's accent and a Nigerian's accent just sound so damn similar, right? Uh, Jussie's manager was allegedly on the phone during this said alleged attack. By the afternoon of the same day, celebrities and politicians alike were condemning the alleged attack, and it was highlighted to tout an anti-lynching law that was introduced by Senators Kamala Harris and Cory Booker. Also, LGBTQ organizations pounced on this opportunity to push their own agendas. But after hundreds of hours of footage was scoured through by both CPD and the FBI, no footage of the attack was actually found. Jesse's story started to unravel as the mainstream media and the alternative media largely polarized around two camps. The first camp, Jesse is the victim, mainly from the mainstream media. And the second camp, Jesse is lying, mainly from the alternative media. And of course, there were detractors on both sides, but generally the mainstream media was saying that he was the victim and you know, the, the, that hate crimes were rampant in the United States and that they are very rarely reported and that this is an underlying issue that uh, sheds light on a huge issue of hatred in America, mostly committed by white people, according to the mainstream media. And largely, the alternative media was saying, wait a second, hold up. This story doesn't sound right. And that is why mainstream media and alternative media, you have two forks in the road. Mainstream media, why is it that they can keep getting these stories wrong time after time after time after time again? Here's the reason. Mainstream media gets paid whether the story's correct or not. Whether they flub the story up completely, they still get paid. Alternative media, if we don't get the story right, we get tanked. Our channel suffers, our reputation suffers, which is why alternative media puts forth a little bit more of an effort to get the story correct as far as I can see it. The mainstream media, they really don't care. They put the story out and they get paid either way. Uh, let's see. Jesse maintained and still maintains this day that his accounts are 100% accurate and true. However, the tale of two narratives took a dive when the two persons of interest were identified as Nigerian bodybuilders, and forgive me if I butcher this name, Abim, Abimbola Abel and Olabinjo Ola Osundario, one of whom Jesse had actually previously hired as a personal trainer for a music video. So he had personal, intimate knowledge of one of the individuals. And today, police have stated that after full cooperation from the Nigerian brothers, the investigation has switched gears, and now Jesse is suspected of orchestrating the attack, and in fact, rehearsing it as well and was going to pay a total of $4,000 to the brothers, and that the fake attack was scheduled to happen before the 29th, which incidentally is just before J Jesse's scheduled concert. But that's just a coincidence, right? 
The noose was purchased at the Crafty Beer Crafty Beaver Hardware Store in the Ravenswood neighborhood the weekend of the 25th, which incidentally, if you'll notice, I broke that story before anybody broke that story with my own personal sources that I had inside CPD that I was calling and emailing. Before anybody even mentioned anything, I said yes, beyond a doubt, definitively is what I said. Definitively. I reported that my sources said that that rope was absolutely beyond a doubt purchased just recently, brand new, out of the package. But, of course, nobody gets the credit for that but the big boys because, well, I'm a small fry and I don't know nothing and I don't know shit from Shinola. Even though I really was the one that broke about the rope first. First! Just saying, touting my own horn a little bit because I will go the extra mile. I will press the flesh and I will walk the beat and I will make those phone calls to try to get as much accurate information from you guys as I could. And when I first started, everybody said, you're going to call the police department. They're not going to tell you anything. But you know what? I called the police department. I spoke to them like human beings. I got a couple people that were willing to help me out with this. And they did. They came through. They, they came through. They know who they are. I appreciate them. You guys appreciate them. I know you guys appreciate them. So if you appreciate the hard work that I went through to get this extra story on the, the, at least the rope is one provable thing that I definitely broke before anybody else, give this video a thumbs up, a like, and a share, and a comment. I'd really appreciate it. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, hours and hours and hours of hard work. So where are we today? Well, it definitely looks like absolutely Jesse Smollett is definitely guilty of this, probably orchestrated it. They definitely, looks like they had rehearsed it. All the evidence points towards this end. Why? The timing is a little bit weird. Uh, the brothers did state that it had to happen before the 29th. Why before the 29th? Well, because Jesse's concert was right around the corner, wasn't it? That's an interesting point. Was it because he wanted to bring sympathy points for his concert? Those sweet, sweet, sweet victim bucks, uh, which in some case, victimhood bucks is worth more than real money these days. I don't know. It's a speculation at this point, but that's kind of where it seems, especially since they said that the attack had to happen before the 29th. Uh, that would give enough time for enough sympathy for people to show up at his concert, and that would make sense that he would want to start his, uh, his concert and his music career off on uh, a platform of getting a bunch of victimhood bucks because you'll get sympathy points and people come to your concert just to show support for you. People who normally wouldn't come to your concert. And then if you are a victim, heaven forbid anybody criticize your concert. So if you're a victim and you have a shitty concert, it's absolute crap. You can't sing, you can't dance. Guess what? Anybody that criticizes you is going to be criticized because now you're a victim. That's why I say in a lot of cases in today's day and age, victimhood bucks, victimhood bucks are worth more than real cash. Whew. All right, so that is what I understand so far. That is how I have it. I'm quite proud that my sources came through with the rope uh, and that uh, I am really the first one that came out and said, yes, definitively, absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt, my sources are saying that this rope was brand new out of the package. Uh, I'm very proud of that. And uh, I like being able to make sure you guys have the proper information. But this is a community. This is a discussion. I want to hear your thoughts on the matter. Tell me what you guys think, and uh, yeah. What a roller coaster, huh? So it looks like we're coming up towards the end of it. We're about 99.8% done with the whole investigation now, I, I believe. It is going to be any day now, any minute now, when we will get some more information. I will try to keep up with it. I'm also going to be doing a story on the, uh, the Aurora shooting, uh, and also on the uh, Willie McCoy shooting. In case you guys haven't heard that, it's a bit of an underreported shooting. I do do news stories on all kinds of other things. I encourage you guys to check them out. I encourage your guys' input and your comments, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. And as I said, I'm going to do, be doing a story on the Aurora shooting, and uh, Willie, Willie McCloy might be a little bit later. I did just get back from a, a long trip, so uh, time zones and everything, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. But I did want to get all this information out there to you guys today. So let me know what you guys think. Give it a thumbs up. Give, give it a like. Give it a share. That definitely helps with the YouTube, YouTube algorithm. And I'm finding that that's the one battle that I am fighting the most is fighting the YouTube algorithm. The smaller you are, the more you have to fight that algorithm. So uh, definitely let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys on the next one. Join me for the next news stories. You guys are awesome. 
thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>